Hello again and welcome to another 140k Imperial Guard Tactics video and before we get into today's video I would like to say a huge thank you to Damien Day for sending in some awesome pictures of his Imperial Guard army battling it out against the dreaded Golden Boys, the Adeptus Custodes. They're one of the really strongest factions at the moment, Adeptus Custodes. So well done, Damien, for you know lining up your guard against them and giving them a good thrashing. Sounds like from uh, some of the narrative you sent along with the pictures that it was a good, it was a really good fight. So you know, well done there. Looks like a really good battlefield. Loving the army, lots of infantry and artillery and tanks. Just. A really cool looking, nice, classic Imperial Guard army. So thank you for sending in these pictures, Damien. If anyone else has got any cool pictures they want me to use in my videos, please post them on my Facebook page or you can email them to me at mordiangloryTV at gmail.com. Without further ado, let's crack on with today's video. Now today, guys, I want to talk about Basilisks because I think with the release of the latest balance patch that the humble Basilisk might have a place in our armies once again. Now, some of you will be saying, but morning glory, I never leave home without my trusty Earthshaker. Why are you saying they're back in business? Have they not always been back? Well, no, unfortunately. Um, in 8th edition, Basilisks were sort of the favoured child, favoured artillery piece of the guard community because you had things like access to the Vigilist Detachment that allowed them to fire twice and all sorts of other goodies and all this kind of good stuff. But in 9th edition, they kind of fell out of favour uh, and Manticores came to the forefront. And that was partly because of things like Full Payload and Psychic Awakening, which really allowed the Manticore to basically put out loads and loads of damage three shots. And that was really what you went for. And also thanks to Psychic Awakening, you had access to the ability to that Manticore to re-roll the random number of shots. That It wasn't just in Cajun that could do it. And there was just there was loads of little factors that really pushed the Manticore over the Basilisk. The fact that it was strength, you know, the Basilisk strength nine versus the Manticore strength ten made a big deal when Death Guard were one of the first codexes to come out. We had lots of Thunder's five things wandering around, like eradicators and stuff like that. Uh, so, and it's just again, it, it sort of came down to the really the high number of shots. However. I think Basilisks have got a place now, and even though we can't use the Vigilus detachment to let us fire our Basilisk twice, uh, thanks to Hammer of the Emperor, I think that the Basilisk might have a place, and also other things in the balance patch. The Basilisk might, I don't think it's better than the Manticore, but I think that if you've got, to, if you're taking a brigade, and you've got two Manticores already, then instead of taking a third Manticore or Mortar Teams or anything like that, you might be well served in taking that ba that Basilisk to fill out the extra slot. And you might be well served in general in taking that Basilisk as an extra heavy support option in your army. So why why do I think this is the case? What is the justification? You can't just say these things, Muddy Glory. We're guard players. We need cold, hard data. We need reasoning. We need logic. Okay, I know we're not adept mechanicals players, but you know I need to explain myself. I get that. Otherwise, I just shut this video off now, and that's it, right? Anyway, total offshoot there. But why do I think the Basilisk is back in business? Simply put, guys, it comes down to three factors. Firstly, the Basilisk has access to uh, aerial spotters, which is a stratagem in the main guard book that a lot of people don't use, but I think now might be making a comeback. So that's the first thing. Secondly, it has greater AP. And uh, thirdly, that links into the fact that it has, uh, we're now in a meta of armor of contempt. Okay, so those three things sort of combine together. So let's address the first one, Aerial Spotters and, and Hammer of the Emperor. So Hammer of the Emperor is the latest buff that we got in the balanced data sheet, which basically says if you get a six to hit, then your wound goes straight through. You, you, the enemy still gets an arm save and everything, but you don't have to roll to wound. A six to hit automatically wounds, which is good. Very, very good. Now, naturally, this kind of lends itself to units that can chuck out more bullets, right? Or more bombs or shells, whatever you want to call it, because you want to have more opportunities to get more sixes, which are going to auto wound. This is correct. And the Manticore obviously puts out 2d6 shots versus the Basilisk's 1d6. So you'd think that the, you know, statistically the Manticore is the way to go, but hang on a second, because Manticores are very swingy. 
whilst on average they will get you know seven shots, I'm sure many of us who have been using our full pen of manticles for the last God knows how many months will tell you that there have been times when you just get that double one or you get something even worse like a, like a th like two threes or a three and a two and you're just like oh, I can't you know I can see I can see if you roll both of those or I could you know it just it just drop it just drops out at the at the wrong point I'm sure we've all been there especially if we're running KD and stuff like that now we've all been there whereas the basilisk has a very consistent number of shots. It rolls 2d6 and pick the highest, which means you're pretty much always guaranteed, I think it's like four and a half. So let's say, let's be generous. For once, let's be generous to ourselves. You're pretty much guaranteed to get like five shots from your basilisk every single time. So more often than not, you're very likely to get at least a6, which is good. So that's slightly leans into Hammer of the Emperor. You know, it's at least, I wouldn't say it's better than the Manticore. It's consistent and it's at least equally viable, equally able to take advantage of Hammer of the Emperor as the Manticore, but it's a little bit cheaper. Okay, fair enough. If we're really leaning into that mechanic, we've got a unit now which can equally, you know, take advantage of it as the Manticore. You know, one, you know, roughly. One is consistently going to get that extra shot. One of them might, you know, should do, but sometimes it won't, and sometimes it might get two. You know, if you get if you get twelve shots off, so you know the, you sort of see the reliability versus the you know the potential for spikes. You know that the, the basilisk can now really take advantage of that hammer of the ember just as well as the manticore can. That's how I see it anyway. Now, the other thing is that the basilisk actually has more opportunities to take advantage of hammer of the emperor if you use the stratagem aerial spotters because aerial spotters is two CP. So it is, it, is an, it is an expensive cost, especially with, you know, regular Cadian Guard being the more competitive option and then already being CP hungry. Uh, another two CP to throw down might make might make you win. So, you know, you're almost guaranteed to spend all your CP in turns one and two now, right? Well, yes. But what Aerospotters does is it gives you full rerolls to hit. Full rerolls to hit. So now the basilisk and it can only be used on basilisk and wyverns and i'm going to save wyverns for another video for now we'll just focus on basilisk but now you, we're sort of we're, you can definitely argue that the basilisk can take advantage of hand of the emperor just as much if not slightly more than the manticore because it's all like more opportunities to roll those sixes so let's say you get your five shots you know when you roll those dice one of those statistically one of them has got a good chance of being a six and then you get to reroll all your misses and they get another chance. So if you get, you know, let's say you miss, let's say you get two hits, one of them's a six, great. You then get to reroll three of them. You've got another chance that you're gonna pick up another six there. Thanks to the rerolls. So it's really, really good. And even if you don't take advantage of um, aerial spotters, you can take advantage of the K the fact that the Cadians have inbuilt rerolls to one. And if you, you know, so there's a chance there that you're going to pick up another six. But again, fair enough, that does apply to the Manticore as well. So really, you want to be thinking about Aerial Spotters when you're thinking about Basilisk, Camp of the Emperor, Aerial Spotters. That's the way you want to be thinking about it. So it's 2 CP, but it is a, it's chances to get more of those auto wounds through, which is really, we need, to be, we need to be really leveraging that as much as possible. It's a big buff, but if we don't take advantage of it, we're, it's not, we're, the guard aren't going to get any better. So that's the first thing to mention. So second thing to mention is, the, well, it's kind of like a combined one. I'll combine these together. You've got Hammer of the Emperor and you've got, uh, sorry, you've got Armor of Contempt and you've got the extra AP. So Armor of Contempt is a big buff for Marines, a really big buff that they got in the balanced data state where basically they reduce all AP by one. So you hit them with AP one, they ignore you. You hit them with AP two, it becomes AP one. You hit them with AP three, it becomes AP two. So the problem you've got here with Manticores then is if you've, got a manticore shooting a marine now it's only ap1 all the time the, regardless of whether the guy is in cover or not now it's only ap1 now you can buff that with things like shock troops to make it an extra you know an extra ap and again if you cadium but it isn't ideal you know that armor contempt is really really big especially with guard because a lot of factions have had like ap creep We've not had it. We're still stuck with our AP2. And AP3 is like a big deal in the guard, right? So, unless you obviously land on Lions or Sands, but again, different topic, different video. So the extra AP on the Basilisk, 
allows it to start competing with the manticore again. It's more relevant again. Now, previously, the extra AP wasn't as big because you, most of the time on AP2, you just start bumping into people's invulnerable saves anyway. Now, that's not the case. Now, a Marine in cover against the Manticore is still going to be on a 3-up. But a Marine in cover against a Basilisk will be bumped onto his inevitable 4-pin vulnerable save, wherever it comes from, right? So it really is quite a big deal and quite important. So that's why I think the Basilisk... Now, it shouldn't be your first pick, but it's not a bad pick. It's got more relevance to it again. So I would say if you're building your guard list and you're going down the Cajun route and you find yourself thinking, right, well, I've got three tank commanders and I've got, you know, I've got Pask or I've got three tank and I've got a couple of full pillar of Manticores. You know, you could go down the route of taking the, the three scout sentinels or you could swap those scout sentinels out and take your basilisk instead. Or likewise, you know, Creed is great, but he's not as needed now. Now that everyone's getting free Vox casters, you could actually, you know, you can drop Creed down to a regular, uh, you know, company commander. And thanks to orders procking and thanks to free Vox casters everywhere, you can save some points there. Uh, you could easily, you know, you know, trim some points from other little areas and you could find yourself, you know, picking that basilisk up while being able to, you know, you could drop some sponsons off your tanks now that all the infantry are getting free free heavy bolters and stuff and that's where i'd be looking to add in this basilisk right i'd be thinking right i don't need the sponsors as much because i'm getting free ones here that saves me some points i can drop creed down right now i can afford myself my basilisk and again if you're thinking about adding like sponsor heavy bolters and sponsor heavy flamers are they as worth it now you know, marines that they are still good but marines are going to just ignore your ap on heavy sponsor heavy bolters and sponsors heavy flamers. So are those points better put into a basilisk who is going to be picking up a marine or two every single turn versus those heavy bolters which quite easily couldn't. They could just totally bounce off marines in cover. So that's all factors you want to be thinking about. You know, if you're thinking about how, how do you fit that basilisk in, you know, there's lots to consider. But now it's not a bad choice, especially the fact that other armies aren't going to be using as much indirect fire. So when it comes to that artillery game, which Guard have all, were already really good at, even with things like Hive Guard and whatnot, I've taken Cadian artillery game into when a Hive Guard were at their peak and beaten it twice and drew against it as well. So there's all these factors you want to take into account. So we'll leave it there. So I hope you guys have enjoyed today's video. If you have, please let me know. Put it down in the comment section, all that kind of stuff. And I want to say before the end of the video, massive thank you to my Patreon supporters. It is thanks to the patrons that I'm able to go to tournament, test these things out, and all that kind of stuff. I've got a tournament upcoming uh, in a week or two. Uh, it's going to be a team tournament, you know, five games, two days against some of the hardest stuff out there. I've asked my team captain, put me against the gnarliest stuff. And it's thanks to the patrons that I'm able to go to that tournament, all that kind of stuff, and bring that information back to you guys. So massive thank you to the patrons. You guys, I know I say it every video, but you guys know I mean it. Uh, and if you're interested in becoming a Patreon, say, shameless plug, there's a link down in the description below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.